in the darkness before the dawn of time, in there where the fathers of fatherhood and mothers of motherhood made their home, the trickster gods, the nature spirits that would become rivers and stars in the space between, there dwelt too the forebearer of all madness, all irrationality, all infinity and nullity. Still it dwells in the darkness beyond the edge of phenomenal existence, the great nomenon, a terror at the basis of all great terror, known only as the Happy Chthonian. Time to blink. All right. Uh, this is part two of session two of Happy Chthonian's ongoing uh, ultraviolet grasslands campaign. Now, uh, I should mention if you like to read a session report rather than watch, if you're a reader rather than a watcher, you can go to the description uh, on the Happy Chthonian blog. All of this is uh, also has a write-up, and there's also some notes in there about the prep that goes into this, and some spoilers if you're into that kind of thing. Um, yeah, this is session two, uh, part one of session two. They were in the Porcelain Citadel, partying, carousing, getting more experience points. Uh, and now they're moving out of the city. Part two is all about the bread and butter of the UVG, taking a week, traveling, seeing what misfortunes happen, what is encountered. Uh, on the way to a dungeon. So there's a giant worm fight. There's a trade with a, you know, kind of groovy bunch of nomads. It's, it's good stuff, people. And I have now introduced the video, and there's no need for me to keep talking to my phone. So let's do the do. As you are leaving that carnage behind, Rouge is leaning out the back of his car while Ramba drives and just watching the... <laughs> the fire a say trap wagon comes out and shoots a laser beam at the porcelain it bounces off the porcelain but it fries some of the bones on top and it's just like, i love this i love this do we have popcorn <laughs> the uh strange vehicle is a bunch of people are deciding to leave at the same time so there's kind of a little exodus and one is uh, uh driving next to you and it's uh it's it, it like it's this rusty doom buggy, but then it rusts out of existence into dust and then reforms itself as this brand new iron thing. And then it rusts yeah. out of existence and reforms itself. So that's happening. And there's this uh, person driving and it's got like a big trailer behind it. Uh, and on the side of the trailer, there's like a smiling uh, steer skull. And there's so beefy. when it dissolves, he has to walk for a couple steps and then it goes back. <laughs> <laughs> just the, she's in midair, and then she drop, and she's about to drop down, but it like it oh, yeah. reforms underneath her. <laughs> she's constantly like this. She's got like lichen colored skin, uh, and uh, she's just smiling ear to ear. Has like uh, was it who's talking heads? David Byrne. David Byrne's big gray suit from that's right now. It's got things cut out of it to look like a giant skeleton, and you get that she's got this whole skeleton theme. Uh, and it says Irab Irabiz's bone work on the side of her thing, and she like looks up at you and yells, and it's like pretty impressive stuff, isn't it? I hope you had a good trade. <laughs> Just riding alongside all of you. Sure. <laughs> Drop some stuff with the princes or the say traps, huh? Either way, it could go pretty badly for you. I've never wanted to get a prince in trouble. Anyone in get? <laughs> Their eyes lock with yours, like they can just sense as soon as they see you. Oh, you poor boy. Princes are too strict about collecting debts, are they? <laughs> I'm afraid so. They've probably got some porcelain tracker on you. <laughs> You uh, you have a, a vague memory of something, and then you look. There's somewhere on one of your limbs. We can randomly determine it, or you can. One see. of his legs is entirely porcelain. Oh, that's right. Nice. So it might have just like sprouted a bunch of shoulders. On on the end of that leg where it joins, you see that there's been added a uh, ominous black porcelain collar. Mm -hmm. and she uh, you look down at that, and she looks down at that like. Yep, you'll be losing that leg if you don't pay back that debt. 
I take it you partied? <laughs> <laughs> it did not go well for us. Yeah, I've got this pie. <laughs> More likely holds the most ominous looking pie box. Oh. She yeah. so gives her a <laughs> gives her <laughs> wide open. Slightly out of <laughs> Interesting stuff going on in the bone chaos, I heard. The bone chaos is down here. Oh, gotcha. I don't know how many names I got. <laughs> it's it's the so wind. Fair. Or that, there's a fan there too. The spectrums are building something. In the bone chaos. That's right. <laughs> Do we know who these spectrums are? The spectrums are the like the person who had the clock wagon. Got it, right. Sorry, oh, I forgot cool. about that. Yeah. What's but, the deal with your vehicle then? Well, <laughs> riding up and down on it. It's a reality rippler. It's existing, non-existing, and becoming. Mostly becoming. Yeah. Wait, is it like a dusty part of it? Yeah, it like turns into a cloud of dust, but all the particles of dust reform into its original form. It's a time breaker from uh, the Black City. A time breaker? Yes. Well, I mean, theoretically, the time is just broken inside of it. Oh. Okay. Sometimes I have dreams about the future. That's a million closer and taps her nose and says, "Good for someone who wants to make a make a deal in the merchant trade." I was going to say. Did do you want to, sh I like poke my head out. Do you want to share? Did you have a dream recently? Ooh, very nice. <laughs> uh, what's in it for me? I did have a pretty juicy dream, come to think of it. What's it worth to you? I am an info merchant as well. She comes back a little closer to your car. <laughs> How, so how much black gold do I have left? Oh, don't give me any black gold. This is that. I have, a, <laughs> I have a secret. You want to know about a dream? She's a, what, an info merchant? Mm -hmm. Well, I have some info about what's going on out in the chaos. Is it the bone uh, chaos as well? You do? I do. And I have info about the ports in the sea. Oh, okay, hey, you know that one. Yeah, I mean, he's got the nickname and everything. I'm afraid then. Let's do a sandwich. You say one, I'll say one, and you say the other. That's, that's two for one. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, but I've got something really oh, juicy. No, from the DM's <laughs> notes. Well, I can't, I can't tell my like, to everybody. I can't, I can only tell it to the... Oh. Oh. He know. drives ahead, it's and then parks it, and then comes back to be able to walk alongside you, and leans in to... Tell me the juicy thing. Roll a, this? Mm -hmm. Roll a d6 yeah. to decide what juicy thing it is. Oh, okay. I got a three. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, okay. I'm going to call it. Revolution of ruin and force of the city. They're almost ready to strike. Against the princess? Of course. What other government? <laughs> Takes out a beat up old journal that says dream journal on it and flips to a, the latest blank page. And she uh, writes down, it's already got like a little list going. It says dream seeds at the top. She's written down some things and she adds porcelain revolution and then closes it. But you can it. tell your dreams out of the Michael Party, so we kind of go back. So. Wait, so, you didn't want, so we don't know? You know you're a revolutionary girl. Uh, no, I didn't really talk about it. <laughs> no, you don't have to. You're really bad at keeping secrets. <laughs> Not only do you talk in your sleep, you make really big, you obvious the spectrum something on the chaos? That's right. And that's, that's the other bit of info I have. In my dreams, I saw the future of their little construction project. Well, this it's a three-sider. Higher is juicier for secrets. Oh, man. We'll give it to oh. you, Clovis. Mm -hmm. Wow. They're planning to finally get back at the Marmot folk. Whatever it is they're building, I know the end game. 
is to colonize the marmot folk at the ribs of the father. Where are we talking about? Spectrums, oh, marmot folks, prone oh, okay. uh, chaos. Did your, did your dream tell you who won? I saw, well, that's the thing. <laughs> Sometimes what I dream doesn't always come to pass, but it always does reflect what's going on in the present. Oh, okay. It doesn't reflect, it's of the future, it doesn't always say what comes to pass, but it is of the present. Where did the marmot folk live? In the ribs of the father, great bone mountains. What, what else do we hear about the what's the marmot folk in one of those uh, prophecies? They're doing a scheme. I mean, the Hemoth shells, the bones of the father, who are a marmot folk. It's the great folk up here who want to get a marmot folk. Oh. Yep. yep. I want to know. Yeah, I want to know who the great folk are. Like, that was a specific name. In the shell people. Oh, cool. Can't wait to meet them. No wonder they're so close. Yeah. I'm, I'm lost on how uh, who all these folk are. There's a lot. <laughs> a lot, lot of info today. Yeah. Just what sit back and listen to the music. We're playing a psychedelic game. I don't know. Just sit, play back with the music. We'll, we'll get somewhere. Yeah. It's like when you hear. It's like when you listen to a Blue to Cult album for the first time. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but on multiple listenings, it might. What are you talking about? The, the Spectrum are the clockwork skeletal people. They want to, you know, subvert the marmot people who happen to be. Mortal enemies to the sad trap. What are you guys not following? <laughs> they're all they're all post human. They're all post human. There's clans. The alliances are being made. The spectrum and the uh, and the porcelain princes are called parahuman because okay. they're so weird. <laughs> they're beyond. But this is, this is just like clan names and stuff. Exactly. Okay. Yep. They're all different clans. Also, they the look like clan. marmots. The the yeah. All right. Why don't you roll a d10 for me about marmots? We'll just get some more. Clearly, you all don't have enough information. <laughs> some more. These guys might. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, just I'm trying. I'm trying to keep up. It's okay. 90. The rumor has it that though they uh, write marmot folk are marmot-like. They're actually intolerant of cheese and dairy products. <laughs> Marmots. They are like the jockiest looking things when they're up against the spacemen. The spacemen. That's so funny. Ah, I love it. Marmot folk. Marmot So we can have some funky cheese. Here. For a week of travel from here to where the tower is, the step of the Lime Nomads. Mark your supplies off. 11 down, 11 supplies. And let's do a week. Now, the Limey Nomads' lands are harsh and dry. It's forbidden tra forbidding yes. travel. So, we're how many weeks in are we now? I had third. So, all right. The fourth week. As the folk can also uh, on the back, there's even a calendar, I think, right? Yeah, yeah to tally um, the weeks off. You can count off the weeks. That's, Maybe we I'm should do my best to do that as well. Did you knock off the two weeks for the porcelain citadel, or should I we do have those? Not, so you'd have to add yeah. those. Yeah, okay. let's knock three weeks off, three boxes. I'm checked. just going down this way. Yeah. So it's actually the second week. Yep. Yeah. Easy but hot. Yes, and it's quite dry and hot in this area of the world. You see, uh, this is actually six weeks then, right? Yes. Two in the Porson City, and now. Yep. Exactly. Week. Okay. As the folk historian, you know that the ruins that you're going by uh, come sweet. from a misty period called the Best Forgotten Ages by the uh, Saffron City's opiate priests. Wonderful. 
dotting the plane, these uh, coral uh, strange thing, uh, coral strange, some of them are like trees mixed with coral uh, in gardens outside crumbling palaces. Uh, it's springtime, so you actually pass some grazers going west past you. They tell you that they're off to the Grass Colossus. It's typically where they go at this time of year. Uh, the purple haze occludes the sun each of the mornings of this week until about 8.30. Uh, and the drizzle is pretty common here. It gets in the eyes along with cinnabar ash that burns the tongue. Gross cinnabar taste. Uh, Are there scarves or whatever? Yeah. Question, anything you could turn into a stink? We're about to have misfortune roll, so oh. it might be smart to scarf up. I, mean, I can. I got a big fluffy shirt, right? But... <laughs> oh, yeah. Naturally. Like fabric. I'm aristocrat. Can... I've got nomad robes. So... Oh. Yeah, my outfit is mostly robes, so I just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not remove my crap. <laughs> I have too much pride. I just, I just deal with it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Roll a d20. Go for the misfortune. Well, actually, maybe I've been rolling four, right? So, here we go. One, 20. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you die. have, well, yeah, 20. For this roll, 20 is as good as it gets, so you don't need to add to it. Oh, never mind. No. You stumble on a group of uh, lime nomads from. Uh, Get out a whole card for this. <laughs> Roll a d10. Nine. Great. Killing it, man. Killing it. Look, if I get some pants out of this deal, it's on there. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you try to trade all the other people? Away? It was a long story. <laughs> <laughs> I have pants are overrated. They don't protect from everything. Like ants. Trees, grasses, trees, grasses, you know. My crab dead. is doing fine. Dead. <laughs> Pants don't even protect you from dead. <laughs> it's not like... <laughs> Just go from the literal to the existential. Like... <laughs> well, a lot of things were running. Revolutions. Yeah. <laughs> 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 revolutions, right. Uh, so there is... Why not even have pants? <laughs> Over a little hill in the steps, you pass a crumbling house and see a bunch of nomads camped in the middle of no nowhere. Uh, they've set up like a net, like a mosquito net around where they camped. And you can see an odd bunch of clouds of bees have like gathered outside the net. Everything about um, inside... Uh, you approach, and they invite you to join them. They're doing an obscure ritual drinking celebration with strong medicinal liquors <coughs> called Voja Boche. Uh, at least a bottle of that back before It would take a day to hang out with them. You'd have to tally a day of slowdown. You could recover from any ailments like glowing butt blisters oh, yeah. with the Voja Boche. Uh, will it dull the memories of the space bending I forgot about yes. them. Yes, it would. I think I can fix it, though. Can I? I can take away a cerebral ache. Yeah. You could, but then you'd have to take a point of hurt. You'd have to lose a life point. Oh. So this would be like a free way to do it. Right. Does this get a, a, a party point? It doesn't, but it is a trade opportunity. If you stay for the day, you can purchase additional bottles of Vojiboche, uh in exchange... They, they tell you that they're giving the voce. You meet uh, uh, the person you met earlier, the bone person, the, oh. the bone worker, and they're telling store, tall tales about great sales that they've accomplished. And in exchange, they say, yes, good story. And they, they give them uh, a voce in exchange for these heroic tales. For So for each heroic tale you tell, you could get bottles of voce, which That's you could then like sell. Yep. 
and it's also a you know a trade good for me. Got a lot of state for a day? Yeah, no, that's state. You rolled a 20 for crying out loud. That memory has flowers. Yeah. That's true, can't waste that 20. No. Never waste a 20. Never waste a 20. Never waste a 20. Is that like, yeah. is that like splitting five. eights in uh, blackjack? <laughs> Never waste a 20. I like it. Again, I'm learning. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going to put the. We'll that Tattoo that. <laughs> <laughs> Tattoo that. It's like totally like courier, I mean, courier font right across the chest. Never waste a twenty. Like memento. Yeah. How Tattoo long that. have you been playing role playing games? Oh, like three weeks. <laughs> like okay. I really, really like. It. I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I win. <laughs> Who has a story to tell for what you about Jay? Well, I tell the story about how I managed to heroically fix a car in the middle. I snuck up and snuck into the what was that? Was that like a crystal house? Is that what it was? Glass house. Yeah. Glass house. Yeah, it was something. Like that. Glass house. We were desperate, low on food. We barely had enough to survive. Hmm. Yet through the courage and, and cunning of my party. Found an entire car made of cake. <laughs> Both other cars were broken down, but I managed to fix one because of my awesome skills. And then we not tell, but we uh, strapped the other car to a to our caravan of camels and used it as a wagon. And we're able to escape and make it to the ports of the sea with plenty of trade goods and cake. <laughs> and that house. <laughs> was cursed by the bone melting magician of Ish. <laughs> the unbroken, or the uh, the uh, chieftainess uh, of the unbroken patrimony says the unbroken patrimony honors this after blinkingly and swayingly uh, <laughs> attending to your tale the best that she could. She drinks half a bottle of Odiboche, snaps, and each of you are given a fresh <laughs> bottle of this stuff. It tastes strongly of grass. Nice. <laughs> Prairie What's grass. What's it called? Hochi mochi? V O D Y E B O C Y E. V O D Y E. Butt blisters here, real quick. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get rid of my butt blisters to make, <laughs> make room for my grass, <laughs> grass, grass. liquor. Yeah. Can I get that one more time? B-O-D-O-D-O-D-Y-E. B-O-C-Y-E. Loyalty tells a sad story of friendship and personal failing about his halcyon days training uh, Yoga the Battle Camel and their growing bond and then the, the, the relationship was strengthened when Yoga ran away only to come back, titanium job and solar powered and his doubt and then his joy in having her back and then the, the fall from grace, the failure of the friendship that loyalty saw the brick of black gold and knew that the caravan must have it. No price. No price but his best friend, the Battle Camel. Oh, and, ever, and he did it, but ever since that day, he's regretted giving up his hairy solar, hairy solar guard friend. They nod, very, they follow along very much, and you see some are moved to tears during this story. They look, they look amongst each other when they say that you had to trade the beloved camel for the black brick for your caravan. They sort of shrug. <laughs> they they love camels around here. Oh, um, so they doesn't everything. What? Uh, it's it's complex. They're like a camel. We love camels. You thought about selling it? Well, it's for a brick of black gold. And then you said you sold it to the lime nomads. They're like, well, I like this out of that. <laughs> and then, but uh, when you you speak of her being modified by the bones, she snaps. And a shaman goes up to you, uh, dressed 
all in grass clothes. They've kind of been the person who's been pouring the Vodja Boche into bottles from this big bowl and carvings on it. And they go up to you and they sort of scan you with this, uh, uh, like a Geiger counter wand. And they're like, and they scan each each person for a vomish infection. And then they nod, and then she snaps. I throw plastic synthetic animals. <laughs> I have that in me. I don't know if that's... <laughs> they poke at it with some lines. Did she in her face? Roll a, roll a d6. Uh, if you succeed, you can stay in the tent. If you, <laughs> if you have to go up with the bees. Okay. I succeed, oh my god. <laughs> the bees are gathering even ever more around here. They look at them and sort of wave their hand <laughs> drunkenly at them. Um... Roll a, oh, right. The bees are in the tent with us? No, they're outside. Right, in a, like, net the, You're all in a netted enclosure, and they're like, the bees are coming, coming up. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I thought it was sort of envisioning, like, a game farm. Where you have bees in a net. They're like... Uh, uh, they're so bees they're... just out in the open air, but they seem to want this spot. And, uh, yeah. No man's don't want to let them in. Roll a, D6, uh, roll a success, fail. Success, you get two bottles. Fail. Just oh. Success? Yeah, you appeal to their... their Camely ways. <laughs> I like old yeller. <laughs> um, old. You, being a polyglot, can hear some of them murmuring to each other. Apparently, there's like a sober cab of <laughs> not totally <laughs> not totally sober, but they're drinking less as as little as you can at this drinking ritual. Right. Uh, and they're like keeping an eye out for the bees, and you hear them muttering to each other of a bee druid that has been chasing this group. And they look out ominously and they say, perhaps we should cut the ritual short. And the, the other one is uh, a little more in the bag. It's just like, the, the priestess knows best. She knows, she can see the bees. She can see the bees. There's a <laughs> bee druid coming uh, for us. For them, yeah. She so, can see the bees. We can all see the bees there. <laughs> <laughs> Blood of the sun. <laughs> Well, I mean, it seemed a little obvious, but I just wanted to confirm, you know. Um, do, the, do the line nomads know why the bees hate them so much? You you ask these folks who are muttering about it, like, why the bees? Yes. I mean, after the one. We ran afoul of a bee druid. That, uh, that is correct. Um, in fact, you ran afoul of the bee druid about 250 years ago. Uh, see what happened. each other eyebrows uh, raised. Yeah, so <laughs> what happened was you guys got along great in the beginning. You did for centuries. As yes. like you had this very symbiotic relationship, whereas you were moving across all oh, these grasslands, so yeah. you're kicking out, you were essentially pollinators. You were throwing out seeds, you were throwing out spores for nectar mushrooms. You were doing everything you could to keep up uh, the grasslands. Meanwhile, the druids and their bees would go out, harvest all this nectar, take it back to the hives, and then would turn it into, you know, uh, ruby honey, which, as we all know, is still one of the most desirable seasonings in history. Can we say that? It's a little grandiose, but I don't think that's unfair. The whole party is turning towards now the priestess listens approvingly. Yeah, but it certainly plays well with these nomads. Exactly. <laughs> well, one day, your king of the Lion Nomads went and made a ridiculous bet with uh, the, who leads the vampires. I know I should know this. I'm a historian. <laughs> But uh, with the uh, region of the vampires roll, roll a D100. on a camel race. D100. Me? Yeah. Um, Forty-one. Right, just for the name of the leader of the vampires, the long-lived leader of the vampires is a uh, wow. Cassioto, or yeah. Cassiuto. And the name of the uh, leader of the line nomads at the time. Again, I should know this, but it's been a long time. They all murmur amongst themselves, say, the unbroken patron, the unbroken patron, the unbroken patron. Uh, and his name is another D100 roll, anybody? 
95. Yes. His name was, uh, Wero Teal Fruit. Wow. Okay. Well, Wero and Cassio both owned camels that they were extremely proud of. And I think it was Wero, some say Cassio, so the history is a little murky here. But uh, it suggested that they should race their camels. And if Wero's camel wins, the vampires have to kick out an extra two camels a year per line nomad for the rest of the century. They all frown and their, look at each uh, other. Their, uh, their herds. But if Cassio and his crew wins, then Wero has to deliver all of the ruby honey that exists over in the, uh, right, their entire share for the year. And so they have a race. Obviously, we all know that vampires cheat, so they were going to win. Yes, they all hiss. <laughs> And Wero has the now unfortunate job of going back, telling the tribes that they have to cop up their entire stash of ruby honey for the year, which the tribes were not happy about. Mm. Everybody goes out. You know how this stuff is. You have one, you got to eat two. And so as they're harvesting, they're all pocketing a little bit extra just so that they have some for the rest of the year, too. And over, it turns out, over harvested, there was a big population crash bees and all of a sudden the pollinators aren't kicking out spores for next year one thing leads to another and that's why you only see grass out here and there's nothing else growing and nobody has had ruby honey for over 250 years and you're still being chased by these vindictive little fuckers you really need to talk these things through you guys need a therapist <laughs> <laughs> you guys collectively a war horn sounds over the ridge. <laughs> it sounds like, you know, it's got spider egg sacs in the horn, so it's got a buzz to it, like... <sighs> See, actually, it's a thing. You got an A in uh, yeah. Silent Bones. Oh, sure, sure, sure. See, they're close. This is not This is not an attack, you guys. This is an opportunity. <laughs> uh, the, the drunken uh, priestess stands up. I just keep imagining myself standing in the middle of the room. With a in your crotch. <laughs> she this is, says, This is not an attack. This is an opportunity. <laughs> the brick man speaks truth. The unbroken patrimony honors him. They give you... Uh, roll a d6. It's a success. Uh, two Ooh. bottles. No. All right. Give him a bottle of the Vodja Boche. I will go and speak to the bee tribe. We have learned from the unbroken patrimony. Now it is the priestess in charge. She walks out, speaking to the, the time they switched from patriarchy to matriarchy in the Lion Nomads is around the same time. And now they've They've kind of confused the two stories. He was a historian. No, they're actually, there's another story to be told about that, but <laughs> everyone's a little buzzed here. They go out. <laughs> she goes out <laughs> among the bees and the, uh, uh, surrounded by warriors who are like, you know, taking bullets for her from these bees and just stinging <laughs> them. And she just sort of tries to bear the stings as best she can as she goes out to speak uh, with the leader of the bee nomads on the ridge who's been blowing this horn. Did we go in? If you want to. I guess you're made of brick, so that's a, a, a plus <laughs> against bees. Okay. Do okay. we each that. get a bottle for the stories or just them? One, two, three. You got a bottle. No, I mean, I got a bottle for, and we all got a bottle for my story, right? Wrong. You got one for oh, your story. Each I get one. individual gets one for oh, their individual okay. story. Do you want to go with the priestess? Otherwise, it'll be left to chance whether or not she's able to. Like, make the peace? Make oh, a peace. God, I kind of feel like, I know, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. I go, I'm but going. splash splash. I'm going. <laughs> I haven't bought a bottle yet. He's, he's very shaking. <laughs> hearing the bees. Maybe he'll get a pair of pants out of the bees. <laughs> That's all I want. That's not like they can protect you from the bees. Literally, anyway. the only thing I'm looking for right now is a pair of pants. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you guys are all like layered. 
Yeah, and apparently yeah. nobody even wants to offer me a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> you meet with the tribe of the ruby honey, which not is... Not the same style. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This is not your style. <laughs> your bricks uh, would tear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> your brick head will stretch out the neck a little. <laughs> okay, go on. They are nomads as well. They're red-skinned lime nomads. You know, they used to all, like, share these lands, but now they have this whole other personality. But she goes to meet with them, and they're talking to each other in their language, which you can make out um, sort of two different dialects of the limey speech. Uh, and uh, all these warriors are there, and they say, call off your bees. And they say, why should we, you limey scum, all of this and that. They say, we were once one. The brick man speaks the truth of the olden days. <laughs> uh, uh, and the, she says, we will be one again. She hits the bottom of the ground. She's very like slurred and in, <laughs> imprecise as she says all this. And she says, now, now the chieftainess rules, not stupid chieftains and bad vampires. We'll race and win together. Not like the 200 year race. Oh, Wrong honey. Oh, accurate this is. Oh. Wrong honey. Those as the vampire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everyone's like kind of scooching away from you in the tent. <laughs> Fortunately, you did not come back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you add anything to this tirade as the, uh, the bee nomads listen and sort of weigh whether or not they will consider this uh, bid for peace? Back in the day, you guys were the most formidable group in the entire grasslands. Nobody stood against you. You fed all the animals. You provided ruby honey to the kingdoms. Everything was glorious. And as soon as you started fighting, everything fell apart. Now all of a sudden, like there's competition in the grasslands. All of, like people's pack animals are not being fed as well. It was harder to travel, so there was fewer exchange of ideas. The cities mm. became stagnated. The culture flattened out. It's up to you to turn this around. What you're looking at here is the most powerful entity in all the ultraviolet grasslands. You just don't know yet. So it's time to put away your petty differences, come together as one again, and let's make these fields bloom, people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please give me some pants. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want? The lead priestess calls out, <laughs> and all of the other bee nomads call out, <laughs> the bees stop stinging uh, the lime nomads and move away oh. from the tent and out into the fields. Are they about to make peace? Mm hmm. You're gonna make me some pants out of that tent. <laughs> As a symbol of what I've done here today. Oh, wow. This is my 1800 oh. level. Yes. Right. Yes, yes. right. So a party is uh, uh, generalized to everyone. Uh, the non-ruby honeys that they do have are used and added to the voce voce to make an amazing new ritual oh, liquor that yeah. no one's had before. You're given a sack of it. Um, and we'll say it's worth double what beer is usually worth, or alcohol is usually worth on the... This is like Ambrosia Voda Voce. Yes, Ambrosia Voda Voce. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot, right? Yep. Um, we're down in here. In a car or in a cart? Which cart holds Broken car, let's put it in here, sack. Part Much partying is had, the tent is torn down. Uh, as a symbol of right, no walls between their peoples, and they dance amid the friendly bees. Along with Gaster, who's finally gets a stretch of claws. He's been sitting there. Oh. Like, oh, <laughs> Those bees muscles now. have broken down. Yeah. It's time to rebuild. The Gaster's Gaster's being the whole government. Just so locked in. Not allowed to do the board. Said worth twice as twice as much, right? A sack of. Felix Wiz is worth 2,000, so this is worth four grand. Nice. The sack of ambrosia, crate of ambrosia. It'll be like kept in clay jugs in a net, you know? That's their sack. Now, Pepe is partying with them, but he's kind of salty. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
they, they, they reassure you and say, you know, these are 250 years, so much can change. We never thought we would make friends with the bees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't speak for my ancestors, but I don't cheat. <laughs> Maybe we make friendly with the vampires. <laughs> The uh, the two uh, leaders, the chieftainesses, bless uh, the pants that are being sewn on site with uh, uh, bone needles out of the itchy burlap of the of the you know net that's hanging around. It won't bother you since you're made of brick. No. Uh, it is prepared, and the day that you spend there is used to decorate it um, with images of bees and flowers and camels. Love it. I like old friends. Every once in a while, somebody says a quote by their character that just, that's a defining quote for your character. Let's make these fields bloom, people. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, please give me some pants. <laughs> <laughs> that's, love it. That's so good. <sighs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I think uh, everyone should take. Some XP. I'm looking at the XP. Big music right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Victory crunch. Times ten. Twenty XP each for this. Oh. Making peace with a <laughs> with two tribes that have been warring for two hundred and fifty years. That's twenty XP. That's really. twenty XP. Yeah. Partying yeah. for economies of scale out here are pretty messed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I didn't like do anything, so it fits for me. <laughs> Do you tell any stories while you're... I was going to tell a story of... Um, Miela was saying about like how she she goes down into the black gold caves looking for black gold. And this was when she was a little bit younger and uh, was still getting familiar with all the noises and shaking that happens. And she's like, ooh, I should probably be leaving. This might be a cave-in. But she's like, no, let me... You know, I really want to know, like, the differences, like, let's see what this shaking means, how long maybe I have. She tries to really, like, learn as much as she can, but that was the wrong thing to do because a cave-in happens, and um, she, she, everything was pitch black, so she's trying to feel out, like, what to move, what's, like, solid wall, what, what will move, but she's, like, feeling herself, like, lose air. And, She's like, you know, losing sense of time. And she's like, I don't know how much air I've got in this room or how much time has passed. And then she, everything, it's already black, but then she like just grows weaker and she um, is passing out and she starts hearing this uh, melody. And um, then she wakes up and a path is cleared, but now she has the um, override jewel in her head. Very nice. Mm. All right. Um, one of the, the who's listening to you now in the general party as the pants are being sewn are the bee nomads, and uh, kind of uncouthly they sort of go into a oh yeah that reminds me of something that happens to me and they tell their story about listening <laughs> to bees and I can tell that sound meant like you shouldn't be around those bees but I stuck around because I was like I want to know you know and I got this sting so bad and it. it, it Poisoned, it poisoned my uh, anti venom, uh, my anti -ve it overwhelmed my anti venom organ that we lime nomads have and like show you a big nasty scar. And I still have this. And then roll 3d6s and tell me each result in succession. They give you, uh, uh, they feel a little embarrassed after telling their story. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, anyway. sometimes I have to like snap. And since I've got the claws, it's like just a really, it's menacing. Yeah. You know, I'm like, hey, hey, who's talking? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so Stop cutting me off. Magic honey has a token of. Uh, oh, magic honey. Uh, All right. So you said two, two times in all of this. Uh, three. But tell me each of the numbers. Uh, one. Mm -hmm. Five. Uh, two. Five, two. Wow. Uh, it's got a picture on it of a person like, like, holding their arm as though they've just taken it off, and then another picture of a person with like arms for feet and arms for hand, 
and it's a uh, uh, honey of disassemblage. Uh, you can attach and reattach any of your body parts at will with this honey, and there's three uses. I know. I was Did you say I have one or two of them? Uh, one thing of that honey, but it has three uses. It takes up one slot, but three uses. What's my favorite part of it? Yeah. Roll a D8, Joe. Oh, wait. I had to put my pants on. <laughs> I mean, wait, is this just on you? Like, my clothes I lost don't... my robe, and apparently I was naked. Well, no, but I just mean, like, my clothes don't take up a spot. That's a Did good you point. just put it on your oh, spot? You know, I just probably if lost you're gonna put pants, You had the nomad robes before, which you could use as a, like a, you could burn them up. We'll say the same with the pants. They make you pants, and they also make you, you know, a shirt of the same style. So we'll say it's the blessed clothes. Is there a special word for clothes? Blessed vestments. Yeah. Blessed, yeah. blessed cloak and pants of the yeah. ensemble. Of the, but no matter what, I get to keep the pants. <laughs> of the Ambrosia tribes. Nice. So, usually uh, you can burn those to keep from having life taken away, but we'll say it can also protect your Ka or Ba, but that's, that's a blessing Ooh. if you're willing to burn it up. Sure. Right. And then roll a d8 as you leave this wonderful party. Any final parting words to the Ambrosia duo? Buzz. <laughs> Bzz, bzz, they say <laughs> as they see you off. The chief Janessa is finally asleep. Yeah. Oh, we did. <laughs> I think we did something great Real here. Long today. And, and by what we, I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. But, uh. That's it. Awesome. Roll this to see what happens the next day. This is a week long travel, so that. Two. Remember? <laughs> now we all get to play. Wrong Just the music that's playing when the, the party is winding down in the morning of the next day. It's very much like, yeah, wake up and hydrate. <laughs> Someone give me three D6s, the result of each. Three, five, four. Three, five, four. So the broad outlines of a single large creature are uh, on the horizon. And you sort of see it at the same time as you. It is a megapede, giant, gross centipede-like creature. Uh, and the ground is shaking on its journey as it comes uh, uh, from east to west, so, or west to east, east to west, the opposite of your direction. Uh, and you can see there's sort of glittering coming off of its massive, you know, segmented nodes of its, uh, or of its body, and particularly on the, the front of its head, these kind of like neural nodes are glittering with corundum. But, uh, this giant alien megapede. Yes. We so, uh, carry a lot of stuff. Have y'all ever been on a megapede hunt? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we do. There's some guy on top. Do of we have to kill it? No, we want to capture it, right? It's its own thing. And you can see as you size it up. So uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. Parker. Possible. It, you, as you approach it, it seems wary, kind of non-committal about you. It's kind of like stops for a minute as it sees your party, and then it just goes to kind of take a wider berth. It's the size of a dune worm. Um, oh, but it's still more scared of us than we are. Man. This is not that funny those about porcelain centipedes, right? No. Okay. Cool. No. Cool. Like can I can I read minds of a beast? Oh yeah. What? Oh, dude. That's what awesome. This thing it has a mind. What did you just say? <laughs> We didn't carry so much stuff. It, it would take, each of you has hits numbered your, how many hits, how many injuries you could take number uh, level plus one, it could take eight, just to give you a sense of like how strong it is. Uh, wait, what? Your life, so if we get into combat, you could take a number of hits before you're taken out of the action or killed, equal to your level plus one. 
Oh, and this okay. thing could take eight. Eight. Might as well we're level seven. We need to get it on our side. You want to use that uh, mind reading spell on the yeah mega, mind the mega feed? And two things: I want to see what he's thinking and figure out a way to communicate with it. No, no, I can't like so it. Well, if it has some sort of language, it yeah. should be able to understand it. Or, yeah, dance or whatever else. Yes. yes. <laughs> you definitely make that spell go off, right? You're holding it in one of your mind slots. And it's like how people have a mind palace. You ever heard of that? Where you like, mm-hmm. imagine a space sure. where you go to you do that and you're like, ah, yeah, there it is. You can pull it out. What does it look like in your mind palace, your spell? What my spell looks like in my... In the palace? Yeah, in the oh, mind it's got many, many rooms. In the, in the basement, there's a library. And there's a, and the, 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 the thoughts from the outside sort of hit on this majestic balcony with red marble and, uh, and a bunch of aristocrats in the background. Singing opera. <laughs> I imagine you humming to yourself operatically while you <laughs> conjure forth the magic. Uh, it works. Roll it. Uh, pass fail. A D6. Uh, success, you don't need to pay a cost. Failure, you. Uh, uh, um, what's odd? Odd is fail? Uh, one, two, three is a fail. Oh, Four, five, okay. six is success. Yeah. yeah. The one, two. Okay. Uh, you either gain an injury, like lose a point of life, and like, you know, gain an injury of some kind because so you're hurting your mind. Or you could, your mind you could, you yeah. oh. could, yes, a sacrifice a point of ha, ka, or ba. <laughs> or it just interjects like slightly off pitch notes into the opera. <laughs> <laughs> it's just back oh. behind like a curtain. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> I just can't sing. <laughs> I get a mind scar, or I lose a pointer. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm you gonna... can sacrifice life, ha, ka, or ba. One point. Life is the level. Plus so one. Should be two of two right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll do life right then. Right, something. that's easier to keep track. Than... Got it. Healing any 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 stat takes a week to rest. Wait, what's what can be healed by the drink you just got? Yeah, I can. Very nice. Yeah, we'll give up. Okay. It can heal. It can heal. Recover from one ailment. Ah. So anything that takes up a slot, like a slot here, you can take an ailment oh. instead. Oh yeah, I'll do that then. All right. So it takes up one of your metaphysical inventory slots, which you'll be able to heal with a full body of uh, as indeed in your mind palace, it crum- it starts to crumble around you, and the worm comes up from, <laughs> and you see its corundum nodes uh, uh, in its skull, and like you see the skin melt away, and there's nothing but where its brain should be, like a mass of corundum, which would be worth some money, uh, but you're just as you read its thoughts. Normally, you'd like have a conversation with somebody in this space or something. It's feelings come at you like we all have feelings but it's a mess of different feelings that don't make any sense it's like you feel joy and shame and uh panic at the same time as well as like a just a general feeling of contentment and that's sort of like what its thoughts are and uh, around this chaos there's this huge sense of hollowness this is an utterly alien mind one you've mm. never interfaced with before and it seems like not only that but it's been mind burned so whatever mind it did have to begin with was something, and now something out there has you happened it. to it. I got this, because I can feel it's mind. Um, no, that bit looks really bad. Very I think nice. we should hunt it. I think we should. What, uh, what did you say it's got? Cor- corundum? Yeah, corundum, this precious metal. That? We'll say it's worth, like, uh, less than gold, but it's it's a it's just a precious metal. Yeah, okay. its brain has been replaced with precious metal. Are you strong enough to kill it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll shoot up its metal brain. It's got eight. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if it's got eight points, let's see. Yeah. 
Low is angry at you. High is, it likes this. <laughs> Seven is, it's still kind of neutral. Seven. Sitting so neutral. you're going to its brain, and outside you can see that he's having like some kind of a reaction, but the worm kind of just continues indifferent to this, to kind of like just steer away from the arm a little bit. So it's not necessarily into us. <laughs> this this yes. seems weirdly familiar. Just I'm dead. Speak your wisdom. I'm dead. The loyalty is beginning to put on his armor. It's hot and awkward and uncomfortable, so he doesn't wear it right in the round. Nice. All right. Look, if you can snap snapped it out of it before I get this armor on, then we can talk. Yeah. As soon as I get the armor on, then I'll go after and kill it. You see Diligence's guns warming up, too, and yeah. she goes out. <laughs> so there is no way I can read this thing. Oh, yep, and that's <clears throat> yep, that's well, in the, the, the in the description of this creature is that it is <laughs> yeah. alien and mind burned. So, so you learned that about it. But obviously I'm a critter. Try it again on another creature. This one. <laughs> <It's>, uh, that's <laughs> a bad one to start with. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna tell I don't think there's any way we can be friends with this creature, guys. Alright, well if it's gonna be hostile I mean, I mean, no I mean, matter what. I don't think there's any way we can be friendly. Let's see what you got. High this high creature high. is friendless and deserves to die, he says. Close. Like way too loud, probably too close to your ear. <laughs> All right, Grandma. We always said back on the farm we'd hunt a worm someday. The time has come. She aims at it. Uh, <laughs> the, the Duke says to uh, says, "Horny, corny, it's time to out with those fireballs. Come on." And he looks at them, and they look at each other. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that we have those guys that can go out and fight stuff, too. They cannot. Yeah. cannot. I just want that to be clear. Of, of his entire posse, only there's only R R Rampatan, the bodyguard, that seems like she's capable of anything. Okay, so... Just no. let's, let's, uh, let's go in order here. The worm is starting to get itchy and antsy as y'all uh, don't, don't move away from it move towards it. What does Alroy do? We'll go around the table. Well, if I can't, if I can't, uh, if I'm not going to heal it, if it's not worth my time. The oh. cerebral purge could uh, heal its mind burn, but then it would have an, still have an alien mind left over. You wouldn't be able to communicate with it still. So. Can I see what it's afraid of through my monocle? <sighs> Very nice. Mm. Yes. Oh, I put that sucker on. All right. Yes. Caspian, what is a giant alien megapede with uh, my, a burned mind afraid of? Here we go. Um, claustrophobic. Oh, yes. So Which, you that and you're a little closer. <laughs> you feel it. You it's see. like, whoa, 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 whoa. Back. Get back. Get back. Get back. So I close my monocle and I take it off. There You're weird go. with your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Mr. Availability like last week, but now all of a sudden we got standards or something. He's got not the brightest bulb in this group. I just want to. But I tell you, like, uh, well, maybe we can use a sword to advantage. It is claustrophobic. Miela, what are you doing? Oh, right. um, I have two smart ropes. So I uh, make a little lasso and try to lasso some of those legs so it trips. Nice. Are you riding on one of the camels or in one of the, maybe the car, just for visuals, or on foot? Uh, well, like, how close are we? Would I have to do something like that to lasso, you think? Like, get, like jump onto something and ride closer? Or I'd say two, ro two ropes are maybe 200 feet. In the heads. I was thinking, like, a football field and the feet snap. Thousand feet? Yeah. Three hundred. Three hundred feet. Are you talking never? <laughs> <Say three. laughs> I, I have to look to other people for these things. Yeah. <laughs> Are we talking end on end <laughs> So That's you're hundred feet shy, but you could uh, move up that close and do it on foot if you'd like. Yeah, I'll just go on foot. All right. Because the camel I have is skittish, and then I also have a slug bison, and that sounds slow. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's still <laughs> grazing. A skittish camel or a slug bison. Yeah, it's a ways behind y'all still yeah, grazing yeah, yeah, yeah. in that slime trail. <laughs> All right. You're able to get some of the feet on one side of its body, lassoed in place, so that'll kind of disadvantage it. 
Uh, it, it lumbers to the side at this, and let's see what it thinks of this. It's an alien mind, so it could like it again. Could like it. Yeah, it like you put it onto its side, and then it goes onto its back and starts rolling around and kind of writhing in pleasure. It's a very happy baby for centipedes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Better than I could have hoped. <laughs> well, this. What does um, Captain von Hemogrogan do? He's gonna pull out his Captain Stiplander composite bow. Mm hmm. And uh, take a shot at where I would think the brain, right, this brain awesome. would be and to kill it. You got a, you got a good, good what is it, vision of that alien brain. Yeah. You just got to shoot it. <laughs> Excellent. So you'll definitely hit it. You have advantage. Uh, if you fail, you still do lose. Uh, it's a d6. If you get one, two, three, you still do lose an ammo, but you're going to hit it either way. Okay. And you can do two damage if you get a four, five, six. Uh, since you've seen it. Rolling bad. Five. Yes. Excellent. Great. What does it look like as you crack a shot through its uh, carapace into its metal brain? Oh, it's like a composite. Got the little wheels on it all over the place. Yeah. And uh, the arrow just goes and cracks the outer shell, and then inside, yeah, all these cracks in it, and then all of a sudden, green goo starts splurting out. <laughs> Great. It looks really disgusting. <laughs> It makes a uh, chittering sound. Loyalty. Does any of that goo get on me? <laughs> I hope not. Roll a d6. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a uh, big one, two, three, That's does. a lot of blood. <laughs> well, she's by the legs. No. A ton of goo. So it's yeah. it's been writhing in pleasure. So as it does, it gets shot while it's going towards you. So it like, you know, slingshots the goo on you. Oh my God. <laughs> Just your whole body and a big drip of it. Sorry! <laughs> Classic 90s Nickelodeon situation. <laughs> <laughs> Does it burn or anything? Or is it just slippery? Can I see at all? It's like you gotta like wipe off your eyes. It's totally slime from Nickelodeon. I don't think it burns, it's just bug blood. <laughs> A lot of bug blood. Neural liquid in it. <laughs> you, you are a mighty rider, right? <laughs> Loyalty does not have a battle speed anymore. Oh, but right yeah, does have uh, so a little leg that makes him very fast. Oh, oh nice. What right, I, yeah. So I did two damage. Yep. So it's at six left. Six. Well, well, I'm not sure how the force will. The force will leg lets Loyalty act in a surprise round and has advantage for initiative. Um, I don't know if it helps him get to the bug faster. Definitely should be able to get right up to the bug if you want to do okay. something in melee. And, it's uh, rolling around on its belly yeah. back right now. So, right? so Loyalty has the porcelain leg and then brought a ceramic base from the ceramic citadel. And is going to hop, skip, and quickly jump with the porcelain leg. Leap right up there, and the porcelain mace ignores any damage resistances. So nice. he's going to leap right up there and drive that mace right through that carapace. Um... It's yeah, on it's... His skill in big game hunting will help him in a roll to get atop a giant creature. Uh, big game. <laughs> Hop, skip, jump. <laughs> um, we'll say uh, normally you'd be at risk of being harmed, but since you've got all advantage it, since you know you're big game hunting uh, and are able to steal clear, right? We've all seen giant centipedes before. You know what yeah, to steer for. Uh, so success, uh, you harm it. A failure, you just uh, don't harm it, but you do land on top of it either way. All right. That's a fail. All right. You crack the... It's harder than you thought, this uh, belly uh, carapace. But you're in position now for a good shot. And you're not harmed. It's little arms are, like, you know, trying to get you, but they're just right in the middle. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. Peptids marked it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's follow him in. Come on, I'll <laughs> my crossbow bolts splish splash on my shoulder so we can charge in my spear. <laughs> it's just, we're gonna follow it after you. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to mimic. We got a crossbow bolt knowing where to go, and we saw a pro just try and do this. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I'd say go to the head where I just got him. It's I'm thinking cracked. that even if I fail, this is going to be the funniest injury I could possibly receive. <laughs> so there's only a... Success, you harm it. Failure, it harms you. Beautiful. I'm in. Let's go. 
floor. Yes, right. just barely. You're able to pierce through with a good running start, and uh, Splish Splash too drives it through <laughs> just in. It's probably not hitting any meat, but it's into the carapace at least. He's and it real hard. My mutation of strength comes into play. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, the three of you who are nearby are at risk now. Each of you roll to avoid being crushed. I thought it was a bow. Am I still in range? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm imagining you being like far enough away that you're not at risk of being crushed by its body. Okay. But it's oh, the three that are close. Where are I? Wait. No, Mercury, I... Caspian, and Kai. Yeah. Roll a d6 success means you're able to dodge the worm and stay on top and log like you know run on top of it like a log roller. Failure, uh, you're gonna take energy from Kai. Four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> it rolls over. You're so blinded that by the time you clear the slime out of your eyes, you see its great head whip around all the way and crack into you as you go flying. Uh, you've uh, still got a hand on the uh, lasso that has its legs. Uh, so it's going to right itself uh, as it does. Uh, you fall off and you get know, crushed beneath it. Is yeah. that damaged to uh, ha or life? Life. Life. Life is on the line here. So minus one life for both Miela and loyalty. So I'm at zero life then? Jerry will able to dodge it because it's just a big right swamp. Jerry will lose a life? You're I'm, level one, I'm so level... you should have two left. Yeah. Cause really? Because it's your amount. Level plus one. Oh, it's yeah. your level plus one? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay then. <laughs> Thank goodness. Otherwise, you can end up with a porcelain leg. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, all right. It goes to stand up, but its legs are uh, fall out from under it because of the hit, so it's... Uh, is the in action? We're about to find out. Yeah. Whenever anybody remembers their NPC, they get in action, so good on you. Okay. <laughs> Boner uh, stares at the worm, and he reaches out a hand to cast his own spell upon it. Mm. Closes his eyes. What? And then beside him steps forward uh, your grandmother. <laughs> Take this into account, she says. <laughs> All right. Oh, baby. Oh, my God. What a pair. These two great humans to chitter. Yeah, I know. I didn't know Boner at the bottom. That's awesome. <laughs> Be one with. <laughs> <laughs> it's just lulling it into itself. <laughs> Beneath the spray of bullets, not to be outdone, riding uh, in the car, driving the car as she has been, Rambutan goes towards the beast uh, with a glaive outstretched. There and there's a is. bone at the end that she wants to swipe it. They have their own, their own car. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about the, uh, the prince's mages? Can they take a shot at this? Or they... They're in the car, um, and he's saying, oh, no, fireball, fireball. <laughs> she takes a shot. Uh, she takes a hit with the glaive. Nice. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's readable as a six. It's, oh, We're going to say oh, if it's on, readable. It's obviously a six. Yep. So uh, the glaive <laughs> goes into the brain. You can hear almost like a gong sound when she hits the corundum. The two mages... Uh, he says fireball, and they look at each other again. Oh. <laughs> the cars went too fast as they tried. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, <laughs> I love that there was a 50 50 shot they weren't going to come this far. <laughs> they were going to ditch us back in the city. Have you actually seen them do anything? They've really managed to not as... die and <laughs> take all of the abuse. Yeah. <laughs> Are they just fake magic users? <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm a little like on the fence. Boner is a little bit of a fence as well. They were amateurs. <laughs> Maybe we uh, just have different ideas about what they were doing. Your, your butler, uh, you know, everyone kind of looks back at him at this moment. He still has his hands in his sleeves and he just says, This is below me. <laughs> uh, Boner opens an eye and looks at Horny and Corny's like, they don't know magic. And then he closes his eyes and continues to go like this. Alroy, your turn. Um, I have a flail. Uh, so I'm going to have to get close. Uh, so I'm going to have Caster 
run in and pinch him someplace painful. Distracted. <laughs> Sideways. Because he knows where all the spots are. Oh, Crawls man. up the side of his body to where the carapace was broken by your spear to get in there. Yeah, uh, making a heroic noise and looking amazing. <laughs> I go in with my flail. Hell yeah. Uh, right towards uh, Pepdid's uh, soft spot. <laughs> Excellent. Which, if you're asking me, I obviously strike. <laughs> Roll a d6. Roll a d6. It might Why bite you if it's pincers. Now. I did. Hey. Nice. <laughs> what did I say? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> sound. Did I stutter? <laughs> More of the carapace breaks away, and you see that sweet corundum brain. And indeed, as you can see, the bits that haven't been eroded by the wind, it does have the furrows like a brain would have in it. Mm. Very nice. How many now, points are we down? I mean, we got left. On it's only got two more hits. Right. We are really good at combat all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> we have avoided it at all costs up until this point. But nice to tack on like three levels before you go out again. Right. <laughs> yeah, we'll get no longer instantly fatal. That's right. Two levels of hard partying. Yeah. <laughs> I like this world. <laughs> uh, so, like, how much longer does it seem like tell the creature? either dead or not able to harm us anymore. It's righted itself, you know, it's got two of its legs taken down. If it takes two more hits, then it will be, you know, taken out of the action, either subdued, uh, or if you want it to be a fatal blow, then fatal will do kind of that style. So it's nearly there, 90%. Also, if you hit it and I hit it, it's dead. Really, I should roll a more round roll now that I think of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's that brain rot or whatever it's severed from doesn't affect that. So, I'm trying to get... Uh, if it's over eight, if it's eight or more, it'll take... It'll what? Three? Six. So it's in, a, it's in the fight. It's, it's, it doesn't seem like it's keen to run away. Um, does it seem like if I poured some of the honey of, you know, would disassemble and some of its legs would fall off or something? Yeah, with the honey of disassemble as much as the, you could, you could remove its legs with the lasso. You could also take off its, yeah, head, brain, anything. And then we can just leave. <laughs> okay, um, so... <laughs> you don't have to deal with the rest of the hurting part. Um... Oh, you just want the brain. <laughs> well, what else, What are you looking for? Precious metal, man. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure how much meat this giant... Oh, yeah, how much is it? Maybe. Is that worth uh, provisions? Yeah. It's massive. Yeah, never mind. Sorry. Wait, <laughs> why should I take that off? Well, is there a bunch of meat on it? Yeah. Like, really? Or are we talking? Like, it's a dune, so pick it's a a dune, dune size, size it's a, centipede. It's a dune sized centipede. So, how much? That's got to be a lot of sacks of meat, right? Yeah. That's like blood. That's more than we could possibly carry. Yeah. yeah. You all can right, fill right, up. Right. We could fill well, the, we're we about feed to... the entire realm for a year. <laughs> <laughs> At least the steps. Well, so you had said it's scared of claustrophobic. Yeah. yeah. So, so I. Um, um, well, I guess I can't understand me, but I'm just like, now you'll be free of even the claustrophobia of physical form. <laughs> <laughs> and I pour the honey up. Well, can I get, like, so, do I have to, like, try to jump on its head to, like, put it on its throat or something? Or, like, I think. Can I, like, rub some of it on the last, so, uh, like, some rope and, like, try to, like, Open its neck or something. If you're willing to get close enough to its head uh, to smear the honey on it, I'll say that you can do that. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to untie my knots on its legs and then smear the honey on the lasso and then lasso around the neck. All right. So do I have to D6? Yep. Come on. Nice jingle sound from the earrings. <laughs> Conan clutch. That's why I wear these. <laughs> Six. Yeah. Six. Very nice. Just burn one piece of the honey, and what does it look like as you successfully use your detaching honey <coughs> on the centipede's neck head? Um. Like what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> 
He wants you to describe the kill. Yep, describe. Yeah, but describe. like, so I like, yeah, the la- I put the honey on it, and lost those around, and then like it just comes off. Great, <laughs> <laughs> it just it comes off. Uh, the point of this magical thing is that you need to take off limbs and not have them be harmed, right? Yep. So like yep. technically, you are literally just separating the head and the body. It's mm, not that's an true. Injury. It's maybe not. Yeah. Anyway. I wouldn't say it's not an injury. But I'm just saying, if, if you don't want to avoid the brutality of it, they, it logically it would. Morale roll for the body. <laughs> like, I'm following where this magic is. Morale roll for the body? Yeah, five or less. Uh, Alright, so the body's still there. The head's pretty it's helpless. You, just, you, re- you reel the head towards you. It's the size of a boulder. <laughs> You're really strong, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so is it alive still? Yeah, both parts are alive, the head and the body. If we kill the head, does the body die? Interesting. <laughs> You'll have to find out. So, uh... Can the head still do damage to people? Yes, they both can. Oh, they both. Oh, so it had, really it had to be because they're not <laughs> now there, we can no, focus on yeah. one part. <laughs> It has to, and it had two, you know, hits left. Now each of each, the body and the head each have one hit. We have a question about. You said that the like mind kind of got burned. Now that yes. they're separated, does the bo- is the body as aggressive, or is the body like at peace without that like burned mind? Great point. The body would change being detached from the brain. Well, I guess the mind is the mind really seated in the brain. Or is it a more diffuse entity? Yes, roll for it. <laughs> yes, yes. Roll to determine whether the mind is seated in the brain or well, if it's a more diffuse. The 37 flag scratches. <laughs> the eyes know. Oh, gosh. Um, four, five, six. Uh, this is a uh, hard materialist world where mind and brain uh, are importantly coexistent. One, two, three. It's more idealist and they're separate. All right. Yep, having detached the brain, the body, sort of stops for a moment and slowly goes to right itself with its newly emptied legs, and it goes about normal centipede business. Yay! Healing! Good job. The head froths madly. Can we, uh, (laughs) but now can can we keep it? And will it carry stuff for us? The body, yeah. I think at this point we kind of have to because it doesn't have a head to do all of that. So it needs something to shovel the food in for it. You know, we're, we're kind of, it's now a symbiotic relationship. You know? I have a much cleaner scene in my mind. That's okay. That's cool. Yeah. I did. I'll, I'll shoot it again. Wait, the head or the body? Okay. We got to kill the head. We got to kill the head. It's a mercy. That's right. It's a mercy killing. We get a bunch of metal and we end up with Oh, is that what that is? Okay, so the brain is like it's a precious metal. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's why I kind of was thinking we would just take the head. Yeah, and run. yeah, that's all. Whoa, whoa, take the head and run. Um, pass fail to shoot the head. Pass fail to shoot the head. Yep. Six. Gosh, y'all are on fire. Real and uh, how do you do this? Describe the ending blow. Oh, the ending blow, I got a six, so I'm gonna go like, I'm like, under my leg or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Pure nonsense <laughs> going on. Exactly. <laughs> it's completely unnecessary. I still made a lot of moves. <laughs> I like to think I emboldened you. Yes, yes. You're like, we're doing great, and then we kept doing great. <laughs> you, uh, stop it from living the head that is. <laughs> you now have a giant corundum megapede brain we'll look up how much that's worth of course. and uh uh also a meat worm worth of uh carrying capacity wow let's add him in here meat worm all right worm, but it's headless you gotta have so, does anybody else want to watch it? Right. Head was, the head was here. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't balance out. Um loyal loyalty is like deep in thought. Okay. Oh, yeah, it doesn't right. Like, yeah. like we've created an imbalance in in the the accounts of life. Oh. 
We should invoke the rod and god to correct this. A what? I'm oh. going to need a camel and an hour. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's what see. are we doing? I, it seems like we're in a pretty good spot. I'm right? going to write the right. skills of life. There's a, yeah. so that, wait, wait, but we did, uh, though. Kind of we Do not <laughs> question him. Says the magic butler. He hovers down. <laughs> he speaks truth. Your, your grandma comes up. Yes, a, a paper prints out from her little her little paper. She we hands corrected it to the imbalance of the universe. It we had, did. We it healed the worm. Head. It had conundrum room. Right. right. <laughs> now it's it needs a head. It needs to be balanced out. The camel's body running around. We can eat the camel's body when I'm done. Okay, all right. I don't know what you're doing. I don't really either. Yeah, but, well, hang on. How many? How many? How, we got the meat war. Take the camel. Just Something take the about camel. No, it's it's Whatever very important do. that the ritual not be interrupted, or things can go very badly. All right, we'll you do we whatever you're gonna do. We're gonna mine the, the metal out of this burning. Right. How much? Just, what's just my, make uh, sure no one interrupts the ritual for the first hour. And Lord begins like carefully laying out various accountancy papers. <laughs> boner approaches. You can oh. see Boner walking that way as you're walking away. He's like, oh, what's that? I'll I'll run guard duty. All right, Boner. Go ahead. I'll like, light up pipe. Boner, like, okay, boner. I got a shot. You gotta give me a hand over here. Yeah. Right. He right, puts right. a quill in, 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 like up against the hoof of a camel with a little bit of blood. Like, all right, camel, you work here. And uh, it's Grandma, it's... does the camel have to spit and triplicate, right? Yes, triplicate. <laughs> and here, and here. And make sure it gets through to the pink one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Loyola's going to be completely, uh, um, completely engaged with this for an hour. Um, if anything interrupts him, the spell will go horribly wrong, and life and death will go out of balance. If nothing interrupts him, then the camel's life will be traded for making the giant centipede's life whole. In this case, there's probably some sort of camel-headed Frankenstein centipede. I love it. Yes. I'll have the shaman gear, basically yeah. just my pipe going as I walk the, the perimeter for you. So <laughs> in case Boner goes back around. Good. Uh, Boner, man, stay here and help with this brain. Right. <laughs> right to the... Uh... Giant Corundum Brain takes up two sacks and is worth 2,000 credits. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> what? <laughs> we went through all that trouble. It's a dune size head. I know. That's why the, the scale here. I guess his brain is really small. Uh, cash shared. Uh, I don't Does anyone know how, how much Corundum is? Or, either that this or if someone cash. can look up how much Corundum is usually Which. worth. None oh, of this yeah. is cash. This should have values written next to it. It's pretty happy to go with that. Where's, so what you want yeah. is Over. pick one as place to put it. Oh and wait, write it down in the cargo yeah. from yeah. the brain. Yeah, yeah. There. and it's so, worth. Got it. In this parentheses, two thousand. So four thousand. Yeah. Okay. Well, and what was the uh, two sacks uh, worth? Four thousand. Okay, two thousand a sack. So yes. It's... Yep. Okay. Like silver and other precious metals on the trade goods table. Um, one other question, and I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> God, all these questions. How much was the uh, sack of ambrosia? I mean, we were talking, what was that worth? Four? Yeah, yeah, that one sack is worth 4,000. 4, Twice as much as a corundum brain. <laughs> yeah, and might I say, a lot easier to get. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, headless, for the moment, centipede can carry 24 sacks. And is worth two thousand. Uh, it consumes. Uh, Sorry. Oh, I see. And so for now, this is carrying capacity of animals, yeah, and then yeah. what they're carrying goes over here. Gotcha. But it consumes, it consumes how much? And I think they might two be supplies a week. Break it down more if we need to. Right. This is where I was thinking we need the ledger sheet. No, that's the time. But like, track. what does it eat? We have we have another ledger sheet that breaks this down more. Well, if it does become a Frankenstein camel, it can eat grass. Uh, That's the hope. Right. Fingers crossed. Well, normal. That's the hope that we end up with a grazing. It is, its lot. speed is uh, very slow, though. Are bugs slow? Have you seen this? I'm basing it off. Oh, right. You're yeah. basing it off. Oh, 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 thank you. Yeah. All right. Yep. I was basing it off this meat crawler, which is very, very slow, but let's yeah, no, say a giant worm is. A giant alien centipede. The parts are already slow. 
it's so so very it's slow it's so slower. If the medium, sorry, if it's if it's a meat worm is what's facing off, this thing has legs. You know, uh, I don't know what the meat worm looks like. This is that the oh, right. oh it's the corpse, the corpse card. card. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a living. Thing, right. right. We're it's got to be at least camel, camel size. I would or camel speed. Okay, we'll say it is camel speed. Merely if you don't mind. Merely <laughs> slow. I wanted to say it was faster, but because I mean, again, like a cart, centipedes are running around in here. They are. We'll say its size makes it camel speed. Um, it's worth two thousand. It consumes two sacks a week. Carries twenty four sacks. There's something else. That was, nope, that was it. Brain sacks. Now the ritual. Uh. It will go off. No one has interrupted it, but roll to see if you have to pay life haka or ba to uh, uh. to finally balance it out <laughs> and other sacrifices. You do not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, typically the life of the sacrifice is the cost of the spells. And do do a, a big, you know, big life d6 because a one is meaningful. Right. Is uh, all right. <laughs> you needn't pay a special cost. As the the camel, uh, how does it? Uh, what does it look like? As indeed, the centipede gains a camel head, and the camel is uh, uh, sacrificed or subtracted from the ledger uh, well, to balance things. So, the reason that the centipede, even for its great size and its many chittering legs, the reason it is still as slow as a cart. Is that it now tapers down to a normal camel size? <laughs> it flows seamlessly into the chitin, but it has to constantly graze, and so its progress on the trail is just like skittering in all directions, madly chomping at the grass with its tiny little camel face, right, in order to keep up with the caloric needs of its great body. <laughs> it's so, so it moves at the pace of a cart, even yeah. with all of its twitch on. Right. Uh, it, it is capable of a moment of speed, but will soon exhaust itself if it does not stop and constantly graze. Mm-hmm. Given good. that the magic of the honey is at play, I think there might be a 50-50 chance that you also keep the headless camel as a living creature. What do you think? You know your magic better than I do. Um, it's a life for a life. It's an accountancy thing. Okay. So. But we get to eat it. Um, no, we yeah. Started like starting with half a monster and a whole camel and get it well, but then half a camel and a whole monster still balances out. I think a headless so, camel. Yeah, I think there's a chance of that. <laughs> that we end up with a, a headless camel walking around, but the headless camel won't be able to bring it all, so <laughs> it'll be uh it'll be a novel we'll have to <laughs> <laughs> Like you know, have to charge thing. people to look at it and then some, pay someone to feed it. <laughs> we totally on and got him this camel to the next people we cross. All right, we have for for the moment. We have a camel with no head. Yeah, right. This is, this is that's, that's moving about long last thing. Okay. Well, the will happily ride the headless camel. <laughs> he is just. Watery eyed at the beauty you've made of this giant does anyone, centipede. Does anyone have like rope work or whatever? Can we, can we build a, a rope ladder on top of the centipede? She's the rope master. No. I have smart. I have two smart ropes. <coughs> nice. I have some sil- unbreakable silver thread. Yeah, I thought that got stolen off you. No, no that didn't. Oh. I don't even remember. Closed it. Oh, oh, my uh, initial like artifact. <laughs> my my yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, either one. Or we can always just do that. <coughs> we totally can't. Well, I mean, it's peaceful now. Can't we just have it, like, you know, drop a leg, crawl under it? <laughs> you know? I think that yeah. makes sense. A camel. How do we how control it? Bridal. Oh, wait, it's got the head. No, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> it's tame as a camel. <laughs> Resting in the shelter of lonely trees, clinging to life in the shallow hollows and wild step. Water short. Or there is much water, but safety is short, as you learned with the giant worm. You've made your way away from the porcelain citadel and into the heart of the lime. Boom, Adams. 
who were going to be popular. You meet with some of them, share tales of your ambrosia discovery. Uh, we'll move this around to somebody else. You roll a d20 for the discovery that you gain once you meet with these line nomads. Thirteen. Thirteen. Don't know what a giant centipede with a camel head. I mean, I feel like this wool kind of has to be a thing. Well, uh, maybe yeah, not so weird. It is, you know. Yeah, we're peacemakers. Them. They had to have heard of us by now. It's true. Now we're literally peacemakers. Yeah. With these peacemakers. <laughs> Peacemakers and peacemakers. You guys have no idea how much a thought has grown to respect all of your capabilities. Truly, you guys speakers. Feels good. It does feel good. And you know what else would be awesome if you started pulling your weight? <laughs> <laughs> now you say that now, but at some point you guys are going to need money and somebody didn't spend all this. I didn't either. You're I, didn't, I, didn't I wouldn't say that I spent it all. <laughs> It was just that that, that I didn't spend happened to have been accidentally stolen. <laughs> Which I can't be held responsible for because I was blacked out. <laughs> I can't be held responsible for the For the money. Lucky seven. Nice. Oh. Well, I so sure. before we start pointing fingers. I'm not pointing fingers. You just said I'm carrying my weight. No, I know. I'm the one who is pointing fingers. Before we start pointing fingers. Okay, let me rephrase that. No one needs to carry the weight anymore. We have a giant. We have a giant. It's true. It's true. It's true. You can. Uh, it's, it's a good point. Pull all of our. We can get out. We can lounge. You can lay down up there. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you make your way towards the tower, uh, given Rouge's map and the letter that you delivered him. The see where it is. You can see it rising on the horizon. Uh, as you head that way, coming out of, uh, you can see someone riding with, you know, the heat waves behind them, uh, away from purple cliffs in the, to the north of this area, nut brown old prospector, he sidles up to you with machine legs clattering, and his dust-blown voice rasps as he shares, uh, uh, asks for some water and shares some new past with you, he says, this is just hearsay. No step, no man would ever admit to a town dweller. They too once had towns and cities. Not always living amongst the grass. But if you head north towards where the blue ridges shade toward the fried pink of the deep step, they still have towns. The stories they tell of steplanders exposing their elderly to the and their weak to nature. That is no truth. Up there, beyond the lavender cliffs, lemon and lime clans keep their people among strange spirits, crawling from crevices in the mind-blasted rocks, squirreling away people in a building city from the older days. Now these old folks, they're just meat vessels, hearing decadent ultras all through the years. They call them memory warriors. Find some false demon they call the ropey ant. Pure nonsense. <laughs> Certainly no brutalist archaeology left from the old days. <laughs> well, I best feel no way. It's a twinkle in his eyes. And <laughs> off. It's always. Anytime somebody shares a story. <laughs> Farewell, family! <laughs> yeah, they like toodles, bye. Yeah, yeah, Mysterious man of um, the Yeah, that yeah, was just like, it's run of the mill stuff. What's the, uh, <laughs> where did this all end? Uh, he spoke of. What was it called again? Uh, the Lavender Cliffs, and you can mark it. Thank you. Excellent. What did you call it or write down? It's a... um, I wrote old, Older Town and Nomads. Yep. But older Town. It was the, uh, the memory war that was. Or an experience of 
when you this will be how we end the adventure Rouge's tower you come to the base of it you see a sigil of locking on the front door it is covered it is made of obsidian and bone seamlessly melded together into a marble like uh, uh, consistency clearly stuck a force is keeping it uh, up at one point where there's no visible means of support uh, there's a cantered veranda. There are spider webs and a giant spider climbing up in the hills. He's like, monsters. I knew it. Monsters. <laughs> as well as a uh, uh, pinnacle up near the top. And there is a figure, uh, apparently a lime hermit, with a little cooking fire camped in front of the front door as you approach. That is where we will end. What did that one guy refer to that thing? A ropey end? Ropey end. And it's ropey end. Ropey ends. I don't believe in that. It's just an old wives' tale told by the cities that don't even exist. What are your dice made out of? It looks nice. Uh, not right. Everyone gets 400 experience points. Oh, Heck yeah.